you signed a piece that allowed folks to go try to vacate convictions. The prosecutor thought this office messed up. Right. The highest profile one has been Kevin Strickland. Right. Um, right. It, boy, it seems like there's a pretty compelling case to get attention for that guy. I know that everybody that applies to your office for a pardon, I'm sure they truly feel like they have a compelling case. Strickland's has caught folks' eye a little more. Um, you've said you're working towards that. Um, as that process moves on, do you feel like that process thus far has been what you intended when you signed the bill? And do you give him any extra time because of the situation? Well, I, I think it's the process in place is what it should be. You know, if the, if the local levels where a crime was committed, and this is kind of the old sheriff in me speaking too, those are the jurors come from that area, unless they were brought in from somewhere else. But it was in that county, that place. If that county decides, hey, we made a mistake or we think we did wrong here, then they should have first yeah. stake in it. You know, it, for, for a governor to be able to be in that position, I don't know the situation at the time other than what the paperwork that comes in. But if you've got a prosecutor up there that says, hey, I made a mistake, you've got a judge up there that says, hey, I made a mistake, or it just wasn't a good case, yeah. then that's what that process was set up for. But, you know, somebody's got to take the responsibility one way or the other on this. You know, yeah. uh, are you going to let the guy out or are you not? You know, and he's been tried and he's been convicted under the laws of the state. And right now, that's the way I view that, you know, and... But then again, they've got a law now that they've got an alternative way and to Jean do that. And Jean Peters-Baker's a serious prosecutor. I mean, she's a, she's a respected person in that field. It seems like she has the weight, if she comes out and wants to use this law, probably fortunate for the state she's the one trying it first. Because she is a person that, that is a competent prosecutor. If, uh, if this process goes through and a judge does let this person out, do you feel like that's what you wanted to see happen when you signed the bill? I think that's the way the law is, and that's what I've always supported. The law says they can do that. It gives them an opportunity to go down that route for people like this. And I want to say it's kind of a, a last chance or a second chance for what they did. I, I think any time you look at these cases, Scott, <clears throat> the attention will always go to today's time. You know, that's kind of where everything gets wrapped sure. around. You'll, you'll hear, hear very few people talking about the victims or what that crime scene looked mm -hmm. like or what happened during that time. Who was these people? You know, and I think all of those are important factors when you make decisions like that. Because, you know, I talk to people all the time. We've pardoned people before. I've met yeah. them, and, you know, you like the people and everything. But you still have to remember there's victims out there that, that are part of the process, too. So you have to take everything into consideration.